To Ms. Dantua, please, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wright, mm -hmm. um, you are the National Security Intelligence Advisor to the Prime Minister, so you take direction from him, and do you take direction from anyone else in his office, the, his chief of staff, for example? Uh, no. I Only do not. from the Prime Minister. Did the Prime Minister authorize you to leak this information to the Washington Post? The Prime Minister did not direct us in terms of the media strategy. That was a strategy that we uh, develop uh, at the civil servant level. Uh, PMO and other MOs were aware of that mitigating strategy if uh, India uh, wished to not collaborate with us. Uh, but Prime Minister did not direct us to do it, nor uh, they approve what was going to share, be shared with the uh, Washington Post. As you said, they were aware that you were about to do it. Is that correct? The old strategy uh, has been uh, shared with uh, the Prime Minister and his office. Including leaking the information to the Washington Post. We did not leak uh, information to the, no the Washington providing, Post. My apologies. Providing sensitive information to the Washington Post that you did not provide publicly to anyone else. We did not provide any classified information to the Washington Post. Sensitive intelligence was provided to the Washington Post. That was not provided to Canadian journalists, correct? So, so the the... Conversation uh, we had with the Washington Post, I think I have explained uh, mm -hmm. already what was the purpose uh, of that, and the parameter of the conversation has been uh, discussed uh, amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It would seem like a leak because it wasn't provided to uh, Canadian journalists, it wasn't provided to the Canadian public. In fact, the Canadian public would not be aware unless they read the, the Washington Post and subsequent uh, Canadian reporting on what was included in the Washington Post. And from my perspective, that certainly seems like a leak, and it certainly is concerning that that was done uh, without without knowledge of Canadian officials who are reporting on this, Mr. Ryan, but I appreciate your perspective on that. Uh, to the Commissioner... Um, I'd like to give my colleague an opportunity to answer. The same issue. Sure. Within our strategy, we were talking to different audiences. Mm -hmm. And so we deliberately chose, as Madame Durand said in her introductory remarks, a credible internationally... Um, read newspaper uh, that would carry our side of the story. We chose a journalist who had a long record of background in this particular issue. He had written on it a number of times before. And through the Washington Post, we were speaking directly to our friends in the United States. We were speaking to our allies in um, the United Kingdom and elsewhere. And we were also speaking directly to Indians. And Mr. Morrison, just on that then, it was, so the, the leak or the non-leak was an effort to get the Americans on board for the Canadian perspective. Was it an effort then, in other words, to, to have uh, American elected officials, those in the president's office, for example, read the Washington Post and be further compelled to back up Canada in this regard? Was that sort of, in other words, in plain language, is that what the objective was? What I would say is that we approached this whole series of events, including our approach uh, that we adopted in going to Singapore. Uh, we uh, were talking to our closest allies who share similar concerns uh, from the beginning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Uh, to the Commissioner, just uh, in your original um, press release, you'd mentioned that in February 2024, the RCMP created a multidisciplinary team to investigate and coordinate efforts to combat this threat. Um, who initiated that multidisciplinary team and who were the members of it? In, in that, were they beyond the RCMP? Did they include members at this, at this table today, for example? Uh, we, we did, uh, we did initiate. There's two teams that we initiated. One with all the extortions and harassment that we're seeing predominantly in Alberta, Vancouver, as well as Tor uh, in Toronto, general area. Uh, we had a coordination team out of BC that was looking after that, but we also felt the need to put a team together to look at violent extremists and foreign interference, which involves uh, several government departments uh, that are part of this task force. Who initiated that? Uh, I believe that Deputy Commissioner Flynn initiated that. Okay, so it was not direction from anyone at this table or anyone oh, from the Prime no. Minister's office no. to engage in. Was that team central to the subsequent events that we heard over Thanksgiving? Uh, I would say that team, uh, there was already independent investigations going on before this team was created. This was more to bring a whole government approach as what we're seeing from the intelligence-wise from the criminal side. To my final seconds here. So this was the first time that a whole of government approach was taken. It was February 2024. 
Uh, as, at this, this size, yes. But other than that, there's daily work with the service and other government departments on an on ad hoc basis when, when required. Thank you, Ms. Dancho.